I am back with Spencer Stuff Making. Um, my name is Stephanie. I go by Katori Freya on YouTube. And I'm getting back into quilting again. So my last project, which is sitting right behind me, was the Socialites quilt. And it's been completed and quilted up. And this time I am making another quilt. Uh, basically, for a very long time, I had been gathering green batiks of various shades. Uh, just because I like the color green and I never really knew what I was going to do with them. I think I started collecting some of these fabrics maybe about over 10 years ago. And so I had gathered about 30 different fat quarters of all these greens. And, you know, at this point, I'm trying to be a little bit more conscious about what I have in my stash. There's some things I still need to get rid of, but I feel like they would be good practices for quilting their panels and things like that, that I would probably would never have in my house unless I really liked them. Some of them are kitchen oriented, so maybe that's why I hold on to them. But back to the green boutiques. So for the longest time, I didn't know what I was going to do with them. And I was just like, you know, I need to move these out of my stash. And so I had some family friends and sometimes I house it and cat sit for them. And the last time I was there, they had a very cute quilt on the bed. It might have been made by a family member at one point, but what I could tell was that it wasn't quite big enough for the bed and it was also getting worn. So there were some holes in some of the fabrics here and there. And since it might be something that's made by the family, it might be something to, you know, kind of want to keep and store away. Um, prevent any more wear and tear to it. So I thought since they're getting married um, this month and this is going to be a very late wedding present, I thought I would make them a quilt that would hopefully fit the bed uh, and it would allow them to retire the other quilt and just, you know, keep it and preserve it. And this one could be their utility quilt that they could use. Uh, so I have all these green boutiques. I bought some kind of, it's like a cream off-white fabric uh, at the store that I liked and I thought maybe it would go good with all the different batiks and I got three yards and originally I had no plans for this quilt. I didn't know what pattern I was going to use. I originally thought I was going to take one of the nice looking blocks from the Socialites quilt and just, you know, use all the different batiks and make a block of each of them and sew them together and then, you know, quilt it and, and Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt kind of a thing. But I did remember there were a couple of patterns I liked in this book that's the perfect quilts for pre-cut fabrics. It's by The Patchwork Place. I actually kind of recommend their books if you're into scrappy quilts because they just have a lot of cute little ideas. Um, sometimes, you know, I don't like the fabric choice that they use to show off that quilt pattern. But, you know, that's everybody's personality and, um, you know, likes and dislikes. So you could find a fabric that you really like and it can make it look like a very cute quilt uh, but there was a quilt in that book which it um, the last part of the name of the book in case you're interested in this pattern uh, it's the perfect quilts for pre-cut fabrics 64 patterns for fat quarters charms jelly rolls and layered cakes and so this one is for fat quarters because of course I had all these fat quarters and without further ado I will quickly show you what the quilt looks like and kind of the breakdown of what I need to do. I've pretty much gotten all the fabric and things that I need for the top. Um, later I'll be choosing at least the border and figuring out my backing. Uh, and then the last thing I do need to get to kind of move forward with this whole entire project is uh, stencil plastic um, so I can cut out my thimble shapes uh, and be able to use that as my stencil. Um, when I'm cutting out the fabric. So that it will take a Joanne's trip and maybe I'll look at the large uh, backings just to see what they have in stock. There might be something I like that I could use for this quilt, but I'll plan for that later um, and just try and get the quilt top done. So without further ado, here is a quick overview of what the quilt will look like and the components to make this quilt. So I finally made my way to Joanne, and as you can see, I'm grabbing some of my template. I'm getting the clear plastic template, and it comes with three sheets. And then here are some of the wide backings that they have at Joanne's. There wasn't a lot of variety, honestly. There was one that had cream in it that looked like it would be okay. 
There's also the yellow down below, but uh, the husband doesn't really like yellow, so I don't think he'd like seeing that on the back side of the quilt every single day. All right, so here is the picture of the quilt. It is Grandma's Thimble, and it is by Regina Gerard, and it was quilted by Karen Burns. But basically, the finished size is 77 by 86. Uh, their bed is a full-size bed, so there should be plenty to go over it. And as you can see, it's got these thimble shapes here and here. That's what I need the stencil for. And then the rest are nine patches and snowballs. So I've already pretty much cut out most of the fabric for the snowballs here. And everything across, and I'll show you that in a bit. But uh, basically, yeah, it's a very cute project. First, they have you work on your snowballs and your nine patches first, and then you can also work on getting this middle thimble section created and then trimmed down into a nice rectangle. Um, so that's kind of the first process that we're gonna go about, and let's get started. All right, so I finally got the pattern stencil, and I've cut out my two thimble sizes. I've kind of marked down on a piece of paper what I need from each fat quarter, uh, how many strips I need to cut in general, and apparently there's a few more thimbles that need to be made at the end from the remainder fabric, however, hopefully I have enough for that, I don't know. I do have a couple extra fat quarters in the stash just in case I don't have enough, but also one of the fabrics that I do have for, thimble, for the thimble fabric, I actually have a yard of it instead of just a fat quarter, so I could always just make the extra remaining pieces that I need out of that yard instead, instead of having to go into the stash again. We'll see when we get there. I'm going to cut these out later after I finish putting together my snowballs and my nine patches. So the first thing I'm gonna work on is the snowball since I already have all those things cut out. And then eventually I will start piece piecing my strips for the nine patches and sewing those up. And then we'll move on to the thimbles and make sure that I have enough of my thimbles from all the fat quarters that I have for this project. So that is the beginning. And also the nice thing about this is it's pretty, pretty heavy duty. I mean, it's not the most heavy duty plastic you will have, but I think it's a good quality. And also three pieces come in that pack that I bought. So I have tons of leftovers just in case I need to make more and use it for other projects. Also, this is gonna be interesting. Because it is still a little thin, the rotary cutter can still cut through this pretty well, but I am going to try and do those strips and then like layering my strips and then cutting along the line. So I'll probably lay it and then put a ruler on top of it, e easily marking it and then cutting with a, ro uh, a ro rotary cutter, sorry, rotary cutter, can't talk today. Uh, so hopefully I won't be cutting into my stencil itself. But if I do, I've got plenty more of the plastic to make more thimble stencils. So here we go. Here are some of my fabrics cut down to the sizes that they need. So on my left is for the dark patches um, and the nine patch squares that I need to make. So uh, for at least my light fabric, as you can see, I'm using all one type. So I've had yardage instead of fat quarters for this. Uh, so for this part, I will need to cut these on the uh, line where it's creased just to get them to line up to these as well and create those. So here's my four colors that I'm using for the nine patches. And then over here are my three dark snowball colors that I have. So basically I'll be making about 20 blocks of each color for my snowballs. And that's what I'm going to work on first. So that's what I'm gonna start on. Also for just tips in general, I was layering these to cut well, actually these, I was layering these to cut and I didn't put my like strips together and then cut, which would have saved me having to sort all of my colors again. So if you want to save some time, like, you know, five to 10 minutes of your life, I would sort by colors and then cut first. Uh, and that way you don't have to resort your fabrics. But if you like sorting things, then feel free to cut it the way you want to. But this is a little time saver. Um, already just with this material itself that's been probably about 40 minutes of cutting and I haven't even cut the thimbles yet so uh, every little bit of time management helps to save you some time in the long run so 
uh, without further ado, we are going to start with the dark snowballs first and then go into the nine patches and then eventually move on and cut out the thimbles and sew those together. As you can see here, I am running those snowballs through my machine, sewing one corner at a time, and then continuing to work and just putting all those corners on. Eventually I will iron them and then trim them down. But for these, I didn't even mark a diagonal line because they're so close, so most of them turned out pretty good. I didn't have to go back and clean anything up, honestly. And so then I iron them and then cut off those extra triangles in the corners uh, because they were no longer needed. Mm. Once I trimmed everything down, then I started working on my long strips to create the nine patch blocks. Here I am pinning my nine st uh, patch strips together. So there is a strip that has the white batik nestled in between two of your dark green batiks and the other strip consists of the white batik surrounding one piece of your dark green batik and so i needed three of the strips that had the two batiks and two strips of the one batik pieces to cut down into my two by four and a half inch strips which you will see in a little bit Here I am with my strips assembled. You can see the two different types of strips I needed for my nine patches. And here I am cutting them down into two by four and a half inch strips that I will then sew together to create my nine patch blocks. Once those pieces were cut down, I then used starch to help put those pieces together so that when I sewed them, I wouldn't have to pin them and they could go quickly through the machine. And here we are just chain piecing those pieces together. After sewing the strips together, then I ironed them nice and smooth and we'll continue to build those nine patch blocks. So here I am layering all my different fabrics that I'll be using for my thimbles and I am cutting them into three and a half inch strips and three four and three fourth inch strips. We're just cutting those down and then we'll be cutting our thimble pieces out of these strips to get about uh, 80 of the large thimbles and 120 or so of the small thimbles. So for my smaller thimbles, I wasn't able to get the number that I needed for the quilt out of those uh, that quarters that I had designated for the small thimbles so with this yard of extra fabric uh, that I had I'll be using this to get the rest of those small thimbles cut. Alright so I have finished cutting all of my thimbles for the large thimbles. I have about 90 so about 10 extra just in case something happens. And then for my smaller thimbles, I have about 148, so about four more than what I need. So there was also these extra ones where they didn't quite finish making that thimble shape on here. So I was originally thinking of cutting those down in half and using them for the corners, but I think this would be good enough um, for just trimming down, you know, and making it square. So these will just be extra scraps. So now that I have these, I can start assembling at least my uh, middle section of the quilt, which has the small thimbles, about 12 rows of them, uh, to make a nice big rectangle. And then uh, putting together the snowballs and the nine patch as well to go around the thimble middle. And then these larger thimbles go around those edges as well. Uh, I did have some leftover uh, fabric from the cactus and so we'll see if I will have enough for using it for the binding later on but that's about it and we'll start by assembling the small thimbles for that centerpiece so here I am marking the fourth inch uh, area where I need to line up my thimble pieces to make sure I have a nice straight seam 
um, and that it will all line up in a nice straight line after sewing those thimbles together. So I'm trying to mix and match the different fabrics together, hoping that I don't get too many of the same fabric clumped together later on down the road when I do assemble this whole entire middle rectangle centerpiece of the quilt. So the last time you saw me, I was starting to sew these strips together individually and as you can see, I forgot to film and I just got kind of hyper-focused and carried away and I started after I got those uh, 12 thimbles sewn together and had 12 different strips and did a couple of seam ripping because I needed to move a thimble over to the other side so that I could match these up. Um, now I have four, sorry, three, uh, blocks of four thimble strips and then these are going to get sewn together so all 12 are getting sewn together so they're somewhat random which is good um, but of course there's still some areas because I only had a certain amount of different colors and fabrics to choose from where you're going to get some repeating stuff where things are really close to each other but for the most part I liked how it laid out and I'll be sewing these together and then once that happens we'll trim this down into a nice rectangle and then I can start piecing some of those other squares together or maybe even sewing those larger thimbles together. So that's kind of the progress I have so far. So here I'm just taking starch and I am slowly working my way across those thimble strips trying to connect the uh, different points and making sure that those seams line up nicely with those different thimbles. So I kind of lay a strip of starch down for about four of those thimbles and then I make sure that the seams are matched up nicely and then I iron to set that uh, starch that will hold this strip together. And then I work my way through it, set it more with the iron, and then I'll be sewing down that whole entire strip to finish off the rectangle for the center of the quilt. So now that I've sewn my seams, I'm just giving the whole entire uh, centerpiece a nice press before I square it up. Now that I've ironed, I'm going to find the middle of that rectangle and put a nice line so that way I can measure out from that centerpiece uh, to the amount that I need to. So I believe I needed it to be about 27 inches or so so it was about 13.5 uh, inches from that center piece where I will need to cut a straight line actually right here I'm adjusting it by about a fourth inch on both sides just so that it's a little bit more in the center and if I make a mistake I have a little bit more room on each side to trim down if I need to uh, after making this initial first cut. So I've done a lot of measuring uh, just to try and double check and now I'm going to finally make those cuts. And here is the trim centerpiece. So now that I have that centerpiece cut out and nice and square, I'm now going to be putting these snowballs and nine patches together to make these columns that are going to go on either side and top and bottom of that centerpiece. So right now I'm doing this step here. So I'm making eight of each of these and I've lined up my different combinations I want to do. I'll be sewing on the sides, pressing them, and then adding on the either the snowball or the other nine patch onto those pamphlets and then sewing them all together to make two of those columns here that are going to go here and here. Now that I've got my combinations all set up, I am now putting the starch down onto the strips and setting it with iron before I sew all these strips together. Alright, so I've sewn these together and 
uh, iron them to one side. I'm ironing towards the nine patch. So now on um, this one I'll be adding snowballs on and then on this bottom one I'll be adding some more nine blocks on to make that three block panel that I'm going to turn into two uh, three by by nine block uh, column to put on next to this centerpiece. After I stretch those pieces together, I am sewing them, and once that is done, I will iron them open, and I can start sewing those columns together. Alright, so I have my strips together, and now what I can do is I can start piecing them together to get those two columns to put alongside that center thimble piece. All right, so I have pieced both of these columns together and it's ironed this way downwards on the left and upwards on the right. And they match up pretty well seam-wise there and there. They're just a little off, but they'll be okay. And so I'll just sew forth into seam allowance along here and along here. And then I can start making the columns that are gonna go on the top and the bottom of this part of the quilt. So when I started piecing these columns together onto that center piece, I actually didn't use starch to hold those pieces together. I just put some pens in and that was close enough. Usually on larger strips for elongated periods of time, I'll probably just use pins to hold it together because it's going to take probably over 30 minutes to glue that whole entire side or those two sides down before I could even get around to sewing it. So pins are the faster way of getting this part done. And here I am just pinning that last column onto the other side of the centerpiece. And once that's pinned, I'll sew it together. And here are those two columns sewn onto that centerpiece. All right, so now I can start working on this bottom part right here. So there's 12 blocks within this piece and I need to make six of them so that I can sew three of them together to get two of these pieces. And these will go on the top and bottom of that centerpiece. All right, so I've started laying out those strips that are supposed to be three by 12. As you can see, I don't have enough room to put it all the way out to 12. So what I'm gonna do is piece um, these 12, six block pieces together and then take six of those and then piece it on to the top six or so, or I'll mix and match to find it. But I kind of like how the, the different colors and the dark patches are kind of dispersed throughout this area. So we should be good for the random pattern that we're going to get with the lights and the darks. So I'm going to start piecing those together and then once those are all done then I'll take half of them and then piece them on to the other half to get those 12 block strips. So I have my six 12 block strips now made and I will lay them out how I want to sew them together. I think at this point since they are rather long strips I am not going to use my Elmer's starch to put this together. I'm probably just going to use pins and just pin them as best as I can at those corners to make sure that the seams are matching up and then sewing because at this point I'm getting a lot of fatigue with this pattern and I still have to do the large thimbles and then the border for this so um, it would just be easier time-wise to pin instead of using the starch to hold this together so that's what I'm going to do next. So now that I have adjusted all of my furniture to kind of barricade me inside my apartment, I'm able to lay down that top. And so the areas that I still need to sew on, I've finished sewing these three rows together to make that solid block. And then I've also done that for this side. So now I just need to sew this seam right here onto this center piece right here on both sides of this. So I'm gonna pin those and then sew that. And after that's done, then I can start working on my large thimble strips. And here's a picture of those two seams sewn. So I've laid out my four 20 thimble strips that I'm going to do. So they haven't been sewn together yet. The top strip is already starting to get pieced together a little bit. 
and then I'm going to do it with the rest of these three and then send it through the sewing machine, iron it, and continue to build off of it. But I think I like how the pattern's going so far. So this is just the next step of getting those thimble strips ready for the outer border area. So I've starched those pieces together and now I just need to sew them together. So I'm probably going to stack all the strips that go together into one pile of four different piles and then run them through and cut in between those different piles to make sure I'm keeping the same strips together that I need for those borders. So I began sewing those pieces together and after a little bit I then just took pictures of the progress of putting those whole entire strips together. So here are the strips fully assembled and now I get to turn them down so that they'll fit around the nine patch and snowball blocks. And here I'm actually using a new ergonomic a rotor cutter, which probably wasn't the best choice for this project, but here we are. <laughs> and once I trim those down and pinned it, I will then sew those thimbles onto that center area. I've finished putting the thimble barters around the whole entire quilt, and so now I am going to measure out and cut and sew on my external borders. So I've measured this side so far, and for both of the sides, I need to cut 62 inch long strips for the border. My quilt's actually coming out just a smidgen smaller than the total diameter that it quoted it for. So I actually added about half an inch onto my border strip over here. So now it's eight inches instead of seven and a half to hopefully gain some of the that one inch back that I'm kind of short on. So I need to cut 62 inch strips out of that fabric over there and then I'll be putting it on this border and then I'll measure again to figure out my final uh, lengths for the other two borders I need to put onto the quilt. So here I am pinning those borders onto two sides of the quilt. I'll sew them, press, and then measure out those other two borders, pin and sew them onto the opposite side of the quilt. And here is the final picture of those borders sewn on. Just want to say thanks again for watching this video um at the end you saw the completed quilt top so i will be getting around to quilting that i do notice that the pink is pretty intense so i will be finishing it off with a green binding just to try and like bring it all back in together that's almost like an inverse watermelon quilt honestly um but other than that i feel like it was a really good project uh, it kind of challenged me in certain ways because i've never done thimbles before and so it's getting me out of my comfort zone of straight lines and and easier seams and just working on something new. So for the backing, what I've decided to have is, it's um, the turtle pattern right here. So it's got this rust and there's pinks and blues and stuff in it. And uh, one of the reasons for choosing it was because uh, one of the family friends, the person that's going to receive this quilt, I think she has an aquatic uh, tattoo. And so even though they didn't have like a, a whale uh, fabric, I thought that sea turtles were kind of cute since she was into aquatic life. And so this is the thread that I'm going to be using to quilt the quilt with. So it's a little bit more subdued antique pink that actually melts really well into this backing fabric too. And it looks good on the front. And then right here, like I said, this is going to be my binding fabric. I didn't have enough of the original cactus fabric uh, for that binding, but I kind of really like the texture of this because it's a really beautiful grain, so we'll make it pop on the front. But then it also has this texture that makes it look like seaweed and it goes pretty well with this backing. So I thought that would be a nice transition at least from the front to the back and the colors that I chose. So as before, I am Stephanie and I am so interested in the making and my, can, my channel is Katori Freya on YouTube. Just wanna say thank you for watching this and hopefully I can bring you some more quilting projects in the future that are a little shorter. Have a good day.